Another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be B Cell Season 13 Winners Bracket Group 1, Phoebus versus White. Phoebus is going to be starting in the bottom right hand corner as the I have yet to see a pink Terran, I believe. So pink Terran, and this is kind of a I'm not gonna color swap this. I think I could. Yeah, I could. But this is very stylish for some reason. Pink Terran versus upper right hand corner white as white Protoss. As usual, this is gonna be on Wavelet, big macro map with kind of an interesting split map thing. I just kind of want to, I'll do a map reveal just because I feel like it. I feel like going the the diagonal spawns, or sorry, the vertical spawns as comparative to the diagonal spawns are a little bit more favorable for Terran play just because you can't, you don't have to worry. Um, well, I guess it depends on execution of strategy. Point being, the players are less likely to have to worry about ramps for early pushes and things like that. And I feel like this is a map that let me do the full circuit of logic here. This is one of those maps, because it's four players, that I feel may end up favoring 12 Nexus, more greedy Protoss builds, which oftentimes triggers a Terran to be more aggressive, go for level one weapons pushes, level two weapon pushes, um, or two factory early pushes, something down the line. When, for Terran to defend, if they're going for more like safe long-term style of play, I feel like it ends up being more advantageous to have those ramps along uh, the edge. It looks like White got the first scout. Let's see if he goes for harassment. However, ooh, got the gas steal. That's huge early on. However, being that uh, this is Thebus, who's been more aggressive, and this is White, who I assume is going to be more on wave level, more economically aggressive, I feel like this might favor Thebus's style of play. I'd like to hear counter comments on that because I'm not going to hold. I'm not going to pretend to be the uh, be all end all as far as this map analysis. Anyway, assimilator finishes. It's going to be a bit, and we'll see how Phoebus responds to this. Is there going to be early Zealot pressure? We do have a first Zealot being produced. Phoebus thus far, honestly, even in the round of 32, looking really good. He's got, looks like he's just saving up minerals currently. Isn't popping down a second barracks. So is he going to try to defend this with just one and go for a fast expansion from there? I feel like that'd be very greedy. We are getting a little bit of gas steal. Maybe feeling a little bit more comfortable opting for that style of play just because it is such a large map. And there are such distances because this is a big distance to traverse, even for the Zealot. So the Zealot making his way down, but it's very likely there's going to be two Marines out even before then. And so it looks like Phoebus is feeling comfortable because of map distances to just go ahead and opt for just one barracks, getting his gas up uh, down the line. It looks like the probe's hanging back. He does want to engage with this Zealot. A second Zealot being produced? Yeah, second Zealot, and then Nexus for White to get some of that early pressure. He does want to make sure he takes some of these Marines out. This SV coming down, he's going to see that Zealot incoming. Looks like he was hoping to go ahead and get that command center down, but he's going to get boxed out. So White getting early advantages here, able to delay that natural expansion. Maybe he's going to get Marines. The Marines still working on the investment guys. They have not really responded, and Phoebus has his work cut out for him because he has no protective line. The Zealot having trouble isn't able to get that Marine somehow. Was that because of lag? I'm not sure what to call that. That was either bad micro from White, some lag in the midst of all of this, or some amazing micro by Phoebus, but somehow does not lose this Marine. Has three health, a Zealot going up against four, potentially five Marines now, and Phoebus bravely plopping down the natural expansion, potentially SEV just kind of getting in the way and creating some trouble on that line. This Marine able to sneak out. That one's finally getting it taken out. This is just to, so two Marines down, that's just to score even. But that does produce fewer Marines in the mid game to help against defenses. If White decided to get aggressive, White building yet another Zealot. He's got that Nexus coming online, Cybernetics Core is warping in. I'm actually surprised White didn't push. Felt like he could have maybe halted Zealots and maybe even pushed for Dragoon in the mid game upon that early scout. And I don't know, played from there. But gas is up. Three SCV are in gas. They want to go ahead and get that 100 gas in a hurry. Phoebus lifting off that barracks, going to go ahead and move. He does have that bunker up. Four Marines, keep in mind, because he's got, uh, yeah, he's got those four Marines in the bunker. Barracks lofting down. There's the factory on the corner. And I expect Phoebus to maybe play it a little bit more comfortably from here. He is getting last scout. This is, but there's no blockade from this zealot at all. So Phoebus is going to get full eyes in here. The Dragoon popping out just a little bit too late. Sees two gate. Is he going to continue? It looks like he's happy to see the two gate and just going to pause from there. But he knows that it was expand into two gate at least initially which is going to give him 
a decent amount of information to mount a response. And it looks like he is actually opting to follow this up with two factories. My curiosity is, is now from here, is he just going to try to get vultures out of the map, get some mines to follow, get some map control, because this is such a large map? Or is he going to play more aggressive from here? I'm wondering if, so Second Assembler has been grabbed from white. And I'm interested to see if this is going to result in that two, that my inkling is, is this might be indicative of a push towards that two uh, base carrier build potentially. We've seen Thebus defeat that. I believe we saw Thebus defeat that before, if memory serves. Dragoons now piling up on the front door, and SCV scooting out just in the neck of time for Thebus. The Dragoons working on that barracks. The barracks lifting off a little bit exposed, so they're going to have to lift off and back out. Double machine shop from Thebus, so it looks like he is going to opt for tanks. He is grabbing a third machine shop behind this, but this should be sufficient tanks to go ahead and defend that front. More Dragoons are flooding out on the front. In the meantime, Phoebus is going to go, or sorry, White going robotics facility behind this. So kind of going more a passive play. I'm wondering if he's, once he gets the observatory up, he's going to try to play a little bit safer and go from there. Tank assaulting from the high ground. But there are three factories down. Now this, oftentimes this does turn into a push a little bit down the line. But sometimes it's just to have a little bit of extra... A little bit extra tanks. We saw Mihu do something similar. The Dragoons trying to peel forward and get a tank shot. Do pick off the first tank. Oftentimes when you see those five Dragoons stacked on the front, that's what you gotta, what you gotta expect. But that second machine shop is in place or another tank right there. The Dragoons still trying to assault that front. So White getting aggressive, wanting to pick off a second siege tank. Picks off a second siege tank. Huge advantages early for White. And now that double machine shop is looking very important. For Thebus. Thebus has three machine shops now. And White continuing to sell the front door, comfortably grabbing that third Nexus with all of that pressure. Because basically, Thebus is not going to be in a position to counter. This is the thing that Terran's lament is I am not in a position to attack my Protoss opponent. He can get away with stuff for free. But I feel like White did a lot of things to put himself in this position. Did the SCV? Yeah, the SCV scouts it, sees that third Nexus. So three machine shops, siege tech up, academy being built, comsat station in place as well. Looks like we did have that observatory. Citadel of Adun dropping down, four gateways behind this. And white looking very, very strong as we're entering the mid game. Pylons blockading potential vultures. And right now, yeah, think everything working out in white's advantage. I don't know that Thebus, granted the Thebus opened up with a factory, uh, factory play, which I think was wise on this map. But I don't know that Vultures would have been able to sneak out and get anything done, even if he had opt for them. Dragoon's actually getting annihilated on the front, not even getting it. Got one Siege Tank killed out of that. So, ooh. So one down, but that's f now four Siege Tanks. Mines to follow. That's opening up the map considerably for Thebus. White moving down with a large amount of Dragoons. And here comes Thebus with, honestly, mm, I don't know about this push. Maybe questionable. That Siege Tank getting engaged. That's getting wiped out. They're sieging up. The Dragoon's actually going to peel forward to get on top of the Siege Tanks. And yeah, I don't like this push at all. This is almost a desperation push from Thebus. Ended up losing all of those Siege Tanks. And ended up losing all of the Marines as well. And now Thebus in a desperate situation. Some Vulture is going to be produced. Six gateways behind this. Yikes. Vulture's trying to peel forward. It looks like some additional Dragoons did manage to get peeled out. So Thebus was looking to be aggressive again, as we've seen him in previous situations, but getting really way too aggressive. I understand the, th the thought behind it, though, which is I'm so far behind, I need to do something. In the meantime, he has put up a command center behind this. Which actually, that's what I would have preferred to see, is just lay those siege tanks out, grab your third, and play from there. Armory's up, but the armory's coming down at the 9-minute mark. 9, 9.25, this armory finishes. So this is going to make those upgrades very, very late. The vultures are starting to field out, but White already has three bases established. He's already starting to get cannons behind this, so he's in a great position. Photon cannon at his natural expansion as well. Grabbing, yeah, now we're seeing uh, Stargate, Templar Archives, so we are going to see that movement towards Arbiter Tech. And Phoebus, honestly, I feel like he's a bit lucky that White isn't being aggressive. Not that White needs to be. Some vultures somehow sneaking through, getting into the natural expansion. This is exactly what Thebus needed to sneak back into this. 
Vulture distracting the initial Dragoon line, and it looks like there's going to be a flurry of kills at the natural expansion. White still sitting at 42 probes saturated across three, ba uh, three bases, so he is still in an okay position. But in the meantime, Phoebus grabbing a very naked expansion. I guess this is maybe a, another factor of this, where I feel like the vertical spawns might favor turns, where you can just kind of lay siege tanks across this northern corridor and kind of end up def de facto defending your third unless Protoss really goes for a long end around. I don't know. I'd like to hear thoughts from other players on that. Level 1 weapons from one forge upgrading, no double forge upgrades it looks like. There's the Arbiter Tribunal pushing tech. But right now the supply count white up a considerable amount of supply. Looks like he is getting some additional map control, just clearing out some of those mines. Thebus, yeah, now starting to back up. I, I like, actually, between all this, the decision to go for those three factories, but Phoebus is in trouble, potentially, because White pressing this 40 does have drop ships to drop these siege tanks on these back siege tank line. It depends on White and how he micros it, though. A lot of the Dragoons getting wiped out behind this, but not a lot of siege tanks on the high ground, plus just two defending that natural expansion between all those siege tanks that were lost earlier. Potentially, this is too thin a defense. A lot of turrets up, so maybe some mines will get down to to potentially defend this, the shuttle taking fire. White making his way towards that third expansion. Actually would have preferred him to actually move into that natural expansion because yeah, now with siege tanks moving up on that high ground, White having to back off. So he wiped out all of Phoebus's troops, but I don't feel like it, at the same time he's in a position because of the map architecture to press anything in. However, killing a lot of those siege tanks is significant, is a big play. Phoebus desperately trying to plant some mines so he can get more of a defensive posture up, and he's doing a great job doing so. Some vultures planting, and I like planting in that gap, just really using Wavelet's architecture to his favor. And I also like that he has SCVs planted, a vulture planted, just looking for that potential fourth expansion. This is three base versus three base, so on even expansions, oftentimes that means the Terran is in fact ahead. So Phoebus doing what he needs to do to get back in this match, also sending more vultures out to distract White, to go ahead and allow himself some space and breathing room to get back into this match. Killing the probe as it was looking to go ahead and potentially grab a fourth in the midst of this. White backing off, leaving some observers to look at this underneath. The worker count about evens, even across three bases as well. Level 1 weapons is not yet online. That is a critical thing. That is going to end up being online shortly. More siege tanks grouping up. And this is almost where I feel like White maybe should cut his losses and maybe not press into this. This is a much smaller attack force. Level 1 weapons is going to land. He doesn't have Arbiter tech behind this. I don't know that he needs to press into this. Yeah, instead, just do an escort. Go ahead and grab maybe even two additional bases and force Thebus to come to you. I think that might be the better play. In the meantime, we do have, it looks like, eight, nine gateways in the background. Initial Arbiters are starting to be fielded. That's well ahead of any potential push that I think Phoebus could throw out. In the meantime, White surging ahead in his overall supply, so doing a good job as far as that overall count. You still have those three machine shopped factories towards the front. You've got five factories, so yeah, five factories otherwise for a total of eight. So in a pretty good position there. But I like what Phoebus has done. You can see all of these exterior expansions. A Vulture sneaking up to go ahead and delay that fourth, and Phoebus actually really going to make a match of this. Really going to force White. So despite a lot of early game advantages, actually, and despite the supply differences right now, just because Wavelet being Wavelet, I think Phoebus is going to be able to go ahead and sit back, push supply, and wait for upgrades potentially. However, so it's going to be, I think it's up to White to kind of crack this and also grab a lot of additional expansions and make sure he stays in an okay economic position. Phoebus, I almost wonder if he's going to try to sneak an expansion down here that he can't really hold. Arbiter moving forward, White holding the middle ground, another SCV moving out. I really like also Phoebus's map uh, vision on very, kind of being, for being pinned in his base, he's getting a lot of vision, is essentially what I want to say. Vulture sneaking out once again. Again, running into some high ground Dragoons. Let's see if they can sneak out and... Looks like a, a Vulture was able to pick off a probe there, and that's going to, again, delay that force. So Phoebus doing a lot of stuff to keep this competitive, which I think is going to carry him into the late game. Let's see if he can go ahead and sneak some advantages from there. More gateways being planted. And I got to say, from White's perspective, what might be... Ooh, these Zealots getting cleaned up as well. So more delays, in fact. And it looks like Phoebus bravely 
taking this expansion to the bottom left. It looks like an observer kind of sneaking out here looking for any ninja expansions of his own. I don't think the vultures are going to be able to take this nexus down. But this is a base that is not functioning. That doesn't have probes that have been transferred. A single dragoon going to go ahead and peel up. It's not full health, so it's going to get taken out. That wasn't a sufficient attack force. But I like what Phoebus is doing in this match a lot. White still way ahead in supply. He's going to peel off some Dragoons and Observers now. He's going to run into a mine along the way. And this is what I love seeing out of Terran players. This is these ninja... Actually, are the Vultures going to be able to take this Nexus out? These Dragoons are really taking their sweet time. Look out. Another mine. The Dragoons do not land on that. But this, is, this might be closer than I thought it was going to be. I thought White was going to push a defense more. Dragoon able to clear that out and Vulture's actually peeling out another and White's army completely moving out of position to try to deal with these Vultures. This actually reminds me a lot of Scan's type of play. Just moving the, the Vultures out to really from defensive positions create a lot of frustration. That's also with all of that distraction allowing this command center to be uh, built at the 5 o'clock location. At the 9 o'clock that's being boxed out. So I almost feel like what White might want to do with the economy he has now is just establish another, get some gateways preemptively up on another location because I think eventually he is going to have to go into a Gorilla Toss style. Phoebus, with a significant worker count at 67, getting some science vessels up. He does have that dar double armory now running. Level 1 weapons, level 1 armor. Level 2 weapons. up for Thebus, which is usually what, what you, where you want to be with Arbiter Tech. Now spotting this command center. Now the question is, is can Thebus defend this? He's, upon realizing, I think he realized that was spotted, that army's in the dark for white, so he doesn't know whether he's got an army engaging from the right, or if that's going towards his main, but he needs to defend his main as well, because if Phoebus just moves this to that natural expansion, he could sack this command center and box it in, but a bit of indecision from Thebus overall, or perhaps a lack of army control. So he's going to end up losing this expansion, trying to engage, and it looks like he's not going to be in position with siege tanks to deal with the Dragoons and everything else happening there. So a loss initially from Thebus. The Zealot looking to Zealot bomb across the middle of this map. Unfortunately, they're Zealot bombing on unseached tanks, but from the high ground down, White wrecking everything in the midst of this. The Zealots walking in, they're on top of this bunch of siege tanks here. This is a pretty decent engagement for White. I think he's going to end up expending his army. But as Terran, you don't want to end up losing this many siege tanks. Five siege tanks still holding after all said and done. Let's see how both players, how quickly both players can re-macro. White with a larger economy to do so. Another command center being snuck in the bottom left-hand corner. So White, yeah, it's got a lot of gateways. This is where it would also, again, because of that threat of... Because if you get a seal at this natural expansion, that's game as well. I would love to see Refugee Toss already. And some additional gateways planted maybe in the upper left. Maybe even towards the 9 o'clock, bottom left. The Observer going to see that? It's on patrol. It might be a little bit... I'm going to see if that's... Okay, it does see that command center being built there. And some Vultures still in that upper left-hand corner. Very damaged, but potentially going to deny additional bases there. So now the game is... is it's weird because I almost expected like a whack-a-mole. Eventually, this is going to turn into whack-a-mole on white, I think. But currently, it's whack-a-mole on Phoebus, keeping that fourth expansion down for white. He's got a lot of Arbiters in the air, which is going to result in a lot of stasis to engage Phoebus's army. Phoebus, with another grouping of siege tanks looking to group out once again, going to rely mostly on spider mines and reinforcements to defend everything else. He's sitting at that... What are we looking at? Still the same factory count, it looks like. And he's trying to double expand behind this. This is big risks. Okay, so double expanding. White moving a large portion of his army into the main here. It's finished. It's going to get taken out. And it looks like it's going to be a redux of the previous battle, potentially. So this is getting engaged. A desperation turret attempting to be built. Dragoon's also moving up into the upper left-hand corner to go ahead and try to clear things up while that's happening. This army actually backing out in the midst of that. And Phoebus grouping up to go ahead and potentially defend his fourth. So this is wiped out. The SCV is actually being left in position. But White, a little bit distracted, sending, honestly, I think a few too many forces to deal with a siege tank. How did a siege tank get up here? I missed this. A siege tank actually stopping with four kills, stopping. That's why that army was sent there. 
missed it, but a stasis down at the 5 o'clock location. Everything happening everywhere on the map right now. The Zelt's unfortunately getting back, boxed off by that stasis, but more Arbiters. This is the difference by, about having more Arbiters in your army completely stasising the bulk of this entire army, which is going to cost Phoebus another expansion. Beautiful stasis. And look at that. That is just a beautiful trail of blue all the way across, which I guess beautiful for, for Protoss. Ugly and horrid for Terran. So taking that base out, White just going to go ahead and back off. Was able, has not yet cleaned up that siege tank. Loses his nexus to the 4 o'clock. And White in trouble all of a sudden in the midst of this. Because, okay, yes, Thebus is missing an expansion of his own. But this is turning it into a starvation match much more rapidly. That's going to eat into his bank. So able to wipe that out. Honestly, I would want to see White with a degree of map control that he has currently double expand. A dropship. Okay, that's what I missed is a dropship in the midst of all of this. Still a decent probe count, but it's going to take a while before that sneaks up. This is just, I think that was just a sneaky dropship to, to scout and, again, provide some room. Phoebus looks like he's not even going to bother trying to take another expansion. He wants to group up and potentially end this now is the movement I'm seeing. Yeah, he's starting to make his way. Maybe he wants to hit white before he can get that economy rolling again. Still hasn't grabbed anything at the 3 o'clock. It's also possible that he just wants to shove up uh, take position there and maybe take that 3 o'clock base. I take it back. He's moving two more SCVs into the bottom left of the base. Wait, white repositioning. He's grabbing that Nexus in the upper left now. I would have loved to see that actually earlier. Maybe even behind a couple gateways with some of those spare minerals. Siege tanks now in position to engage this. Is there stasis? A huge EMP on both Arbiters landing. Some High Templar air in the midst of this. And two defense matrix. What more can you ask for? Nice side storm in the back of this. Blanketing a lot of those siege tanks. And plus some Zealot Bombs that happened in the midst of this. A great engagement. But it looks like White is just going to be able to storm through this. Level 3 weapons, level 1 armor. The upgrades there versus level 2 weapons, level 2 armor. But a beautiful engagement, honestly, for both players. The EMP's landing. But the Psy Storm with the follow-up and the Zealot Bombs as well. Vultures somehow sneaking through from Thebus. This honestly... This, almost, this is an incredible match. The Arbiters... Peaking, finding that expansion again, an immediate lift off from Phoebus. Both players just really hurt. This is, it's odd that this is turning into a starvation match at the 22 minute mark. Because neither player seems like they can keep or establish these bases. Siege tanks trying to sneak up to that 5 o'clock location. Some cannons getting warped down, uh, knocked down. I guess it's not unwarping at this stage. An Arbiter moving up. Doesn't have enough for stasis. Zealots mind dragging a little bit. Comsat. To try to see these units and do something, but honestly, not even getting a shot off underneath that comsat. Vulture on patrol at that 3 o'clock. So this is being held. Photon cannon's warping in. An SCV snuck through there somehow. So that's going to get wiped out. So that's going to be taken care of by those Arbiters. But Thebus has managed to grab an additional base just in the nick of time because his, his main is completely mined out. Looks like he actually lifted off his main's command center to make that happen. His natural expansion is no longer mining. It's uh, He's no longer even bothering to mine it. There's just four mineral patches right there. His third was looking very thin, so finally getting a full functional base up and running again. And White needs to do the same because his natural expansion is mined out. And he was mining much earlier here at the 1 o'clock location, so that's looking thin as well. White regrouping. He wants to go ahead and take another shot at this 5 o'clock base. Sending some units end around. I think these zealots are easily going to get cleaned up. Looks like there was a nice SimCity in the way of this. The Arbiter going to get... Ugh, is One of them is going to get wiped out. Some siege tanks trying to defend from the low ground. But Phoebus once again going to end up losing this command center. SCV is getting stormed as well. Looks like that command center is going to be able to sneak out of this. Siege tanks trying to engage from the low ground. Psy storm over that edge. I like that White is getting some High Templar in the midst of this army. So many Protoss these days just ignore High Templar. But in the meantime, I think Thebus is going to be able to reestablish this fairly rapidly. That command center is burning, but that's still delayed mining time. And this base is starting to run out. White with a huge supply lead still. Upper left-hand base does have a gateway at it now. Finally acknowledging that potential situation of the more long-term back-and-forth play. 1 o'clock base looks like it's just about mined out. Some vultures moving up. I don't know that they're going to... Let's see if the Dragoons box them in. They're not long for life. And this is actually where Vibus needs to be careful with this, particularly on low economy. And this is, I think, the moment that Flash was talking about. Oh, you move these... So but earlier the vultures were doing a lot for him. Right now these vultures picking up a High Templar, which is nice. 
But this is a lot of minerals to lose for not a lot of payout aside from scouting stuff he already saw. And he needs to start conserving minerals and resources here. Somehow sneaking in. Is he going to get pro kills in the midst of this? So maybe ignore that. Battle probes coming off the line briefly. Is he going to get a single probe kill? Does not get a single probe kill. But that was a lot of vultures to lose. And Phoebus is running a very light bank. Needs to keep as much army as he possibly can alive. Has managed to once again land... I keep calling this the 5 o'clock. It's the 6 o'clock location. I can tell time. Middle of the map being cleared. The Zealots, oof. A little bit too grouped to do mine clearing like that. Another turret going up for that Sim City, but White starting to make his way that direction once again. Both players, it looks like taking a bit of a, a breath to go ahead and take stock of their situation. More Arbiters being pumped out. No second Stargate as of yet. Lots of gateways here in the background. So plenty to rebuild. We do have some a gateway in that upper left-hand corner. We are seeing some pylons being dropped there potentially to build that out. White checking that bottom left-hand corner. And Phoebus, honestly, I feel like he's just been relying on this minefield to defend in between. I'm wondering if White is eventually going to start pressing that. Siege tank just lonely in the middle of the map. It's going to get wiped out. A Marine out here as well dying. I guess peeled out of that bunker. And as I say that, I guess White reading my mind. He's starting to move out to test that location. I think that is wise to do at this stage of the match, knowing that Phoebus is potentially low on resources. Some vultures able to sneak in the upper left. Pick off, I think we got a pick off probe. Yeah, with that vulture right there. That Nexus warping in. And Siege Tank's engaging, but White's got a big army, and Phoebus has a lot of territory to cover. There is a Sim City here. The Zealots marching in. Is this going to be the moment that seals the game for White? So just pressing into the natural expansion, wiping everything out. And I don't think Phoebus has enough to defend this. That natural expansion is going to get wiped out. But here's the trick, though. Phoebus can lose this natural expansion and not feel much harm. It's these factories and the factory lines that he really needs to worry about. Reinforcements coming in from the left. Comsat being dropped to try to defend this. A stasis on that back siege tank line. And now those factories are getting worked on. Vultures being dropped as counterplay. To the upper left-hand corner, the vultures are going to work. They actually are going to be able to take this nexus in out as well. I'm wondering if White is eventually going to reinforce to deal with everything that's happening in the upper left. But in the meantime, he's got a lot of units that are starting to wipe out the factory line. So getting on top of a lot of the tech of Phoebus. So Phoebus is going to need to rebuild. And if you are Terran, you do not want to rebuild like this. This is usually a GG moment for Phoebus. But Phoebus still holding in this match. Primarily because it looks like he has managed to clear this 12 o'clock base and wipe out the Nexus at the natural expansion in the upper left. Also, critically, White all of a sudden down to 34 probes, and he's going to need to rebuild those probes. The factory's lifting off finally. Only one factory left. This is kind of a reversal of fortunes. Usually you see Protoss kind of running across the guerrilla style, trying to wipe out guerrilla style... Sorry. Usually you see Terran trying to wipe out guerrilla style Toss. That's all over the map. I think that's, in fact, going to be the case for White this time, trying to engage Thebus. Try to check the upgrades here for you. Level 3 armor is not yet complete. Level 3 weapons is online. White completely wiping out everything in Thebus's main. Natural expansion has been established. Thebus in the red in the meantime. The Vultures continuing to assault this upper left-hand corner. White has some army. He just needs to go ahead and clear that out. Get his, uh, get some more units down. It looks like he's almost dropped his keyboard. Was he just waiting for a GG here? White. Okay, now responding a little bit. Maybe, like, standing up for a stretch, feeling like he's got a lock on this game. Being a little bit quiet here. Phoebe's still trying to fight this out, which, honestly, is a little bit shocking. Dropping all sorts of supply depots in a hurry. Needs to get that factory count back up rapidly. This is a cleanup operation from here. And again, this is one of those... I think this is, again, one of those... The conceptual win. Psychological plays. However, White just letting this base get wiped out at the 12 o'clock location. Inside 12. Recall, bottom left. That command center getting it wiped out. There are some siege tanks back here. But that leaves Thebus down to one base. However, White's effectively only mining at one base as well. 
So keep that in mind. However, White is in a strong position to go ahead and grab it. I mean, he's got all of the map control. All he has to do is wander out, go ahead and grab, resaturate, re-grab these expansions. Still losing these vultures, still sitting here and doing damage behind this. It looks like he is setting up to do so. I think he's safe going ahead and grabbing that Nexus. I think White looking a little bit lethargic here, to be honest. Maybe feeling he's already won this match, but Thebus still wanting to fight this out. So now that Phoebus is no longer occupying the bottom right, White going to go ahead and grab the 3 o'clock. Another drop here at the 12 o'clock location, a Nexus being grabbed at the natural expansion in the upper left. Finally, some troops from White marching to the upper left to deal with all of this. One command center remaining here for Thebus. He's very light on troops and supplies, sitting at half the supply comparatively. So he's, yeah, just going to try to be annoying to win this match. That dropship somehow able to get up into the main. Two vultures still there and might even get some probe kills. One probe kill, two probe kill. Those are some hero vultures in this war. White now regathering. So this base can be regrabbed. Yeah, now White, I think at this stage, keep in mind this is going to be scouted. I don't know that Phoebus can really do anything about it. The troops finally cleared out of the bottom left. More mines being grabbed in a command center. It looks like it was initially built of the, the natural expansion. Going to regroup. And Thebus going to try to do the similar shenanigans that he did the rest of the map match uh, here in the bottom left-hand corner. Which is, the yeah, go ahead and try to deal with me. Because this is going to be a very difficult... I know that these expansions are extremely difficult to penetrate. So if you're going to win this game, you need to do it on recalls, etc. And I'm just going to try to, to starve you out. Dark Templar mine clearing in the upper left-hand corner. Probes transferring. They're going to get wiped out. And all of a sudden, at the 31 minute, almost the 40, th uh, 32 minute mark here, the probe count in the 30s for both players. White going ahead and clearing out what's left. White. I don't know. We'll see if. Honestly, I feel like he is giving opportunities for Thebus to sneak back into this match. I really want to see, is the are there more Arbiters building? The Arbiter, granted, he's in a commanding position. However, I would like to see more Arbiters being pumped because the easiest way to penetrate all of this in the bottom left is going to be with Recall. More Dark Templar trying to do more Mind Drags to deal with these Vultures. Two base saturation. We'll see if, uh, yeah, more probes are being built to go ahead and saturate that 3 o'clock. So it's going to be 3 base versus 2 base. Still an advantage for White, but there's still one more base that Thebus can go ahead and grab. And with all of the shenanigans, the shenanigans that he's pulling across the, re uh, the rest of the map, he might be able to do so because White isn't really engaging. Potentially another recall moving out. This would be a bad location to recall. See if he can get on top of these siege tanks. Nice prime location. There's the recall into the main. And once again, White able to, yeah, get a sizable troop count but the siege tanks really well spread and just swatting that and this is where I wanted to see multiple arbiters and rebuilt armies to go ahead and engage this a vulture trying to sneak into that three o'clock location finding nothing a single vulture still wiping out pylons at the one o'clock base so white right now still in a huge lead no recall on the bottom left another arbiter being lost and yeah white is starting to throw this a little bit like, he should have... Uh, honestly, there's a lot of things he could do. I'm not sure if I want to give credit to Thebus or say that White is just uh, playing a little bit fatigued at this stage of things. Still more vultures sneaking out for Thebus. Now he can afford to do this, honestly. He's got two bases rolling. He can take a third. Probably comfortably. Three bases are starting to mine for White. He's got that economy still rolling for him. The vultures look like they're not getting a lot accomplished, though. Just getting kind of wiped out. The Archons just kind of barreling and bowling their way forward. But in the midst of this, Thebus with just a skeleton crew of siege tanks with level 3 weapons defending the bottom left-hand corner. And again, we saw how difficult it was to penetrate this space earlier. These vultures getting caught in the middle of the map. White still with a worker count lead, still with a huge supply lead. Finally re-grabbing this Nexus, it looks like. He's got a probe. Looks like it's actually distance mining. Setting in a position to go ahead and grab that fourth. 
just doing a, a slow cleanup operation from here. But honestly, I almost want to see him, okay, if you're going to play this way, go for a contain. Make sure that those vultures can't sneak out. An SCV has snuck out somehow. I'm not sure its purpose. Maybe just to get general scouting information as far as where the army is located. More armor, more Arbiters starting to be fueled. I almost want to see double Stargate at this stage, knowing that Recall is going to be so crucial in dealing with this bottom left-hand corner. Unless White's decision here is, you know what, forget it. You can go ahead and have bottom left. I'm just going to mine literally everything else, and I will win the match just because I'll have more resources and better trades down the line. I'm wondering if that's, that's White's logic at this stage, and maybe why he has been playing a little bit lackadaisically. I don't like that style of play, just because I feel like it gives opportunities to your opponent to sneak back in, into matches. That's just from a commentator's point of view. But I do understand uh, the uh, it is wisdom when your head get further ahead. That is known StarCraft wisdom. White pushing an army here. No stasis. Archon's on the front. There's the stasis across three siege tanks unseaged. A big minefield, though, in the midst of this. N more stasis along that corner. This almost feels like a, yeah, a press and an A move. All sorts of mines have been landed, so the mines really styming this army. This command center may not be long for life. More reinforcements to the north. White's army pressing through a lot, but looks like it is finding air and breathing room to go ahead and deal with this expansion at the natural. Let's see if it can focus fire. It just felt like it had to go through hell. That was like a Hacksaw Ridge style engagement. The command center rapidly being taken out of the air. Doesn't look like this is going to be a killing blow because there's still reinforcements behind this. White needs to remax rapidly. More mines being planted, so losing the rest of that army, but did clear out a lot of troops for White and critically got that natural expansion wiped out to make sure that Phoebus wasn't mining on three. In the meantime, White does have that three o'clock location. He is he does have that one o'clock location in reserve. <clears throat> The upper left-hand corner, actually not uh, saturating that all that well. I'm looking for, kind of looking for where the probes are at. Okay, it looks like they're in transfer. Vulture's looking for an opportunity to pick them off. Maybe finding it? A Dark Templar is there, but the Vultures are finding undefended probes once again. White responding immediately, moving Dragoons. There are a lot of trailing mines. There's no Observer alongside. The Observer out of position. But the probe's getting massacred, and Phoebus has been... This honestly reminds me a lot of Scan and his ability to sneak into this. From that defensive stance, just pushing things out. More vultures sneaking out to go ahead and establish things. The natural expansion being re-grabbed. The 6 o'clock base looking thin. And White being forced to go ahead and defend these Vulture forays in the upper left-hand corner. He is at 165 supply, still a sizable lead there. But Phoebus is really making him work for this. Really making him work for this. And mines are a way to get back into this. And Phoebus, again, because of the lack of containment, able to sneak out with Vultures all over the map. An Arbiter... EMP'd in the midst. I think he was moving in to potentially go for another recall. That's not happening. The Vulture is planning some mines to go ahead and maybe do an attack at the 3 o'clock location, potentially. White does have his army there to engage. The Arbiter being taken out at the natural, but all of a sudden Phoebus still on two bases. He's going to be able to transfer his probes, his probes, his SEVs without too much troubles. A siege tank, two siege tanks trying to sneak out, but it looks like they didn't even get a... Sh well, okay, it looks like they got some shots on that pylon before getting stasis. So Phoebus, all over the place. More Vultures trying to sneak out. Still in a desperate situation. He's not winning this by... He's not ahead by any stretch of the imagination. His bank is very low. He's definitely... He's, I'm not sure what to call this. It's almost like he's a pesky hummingbird floating around. And it's just White just looking to kind of... And he's White's trying to kill him with a baseball bat is what it feels like. So it's just like trying to line up that shot. It's like, ugh, how do I... Come on. It's a fun visual. Kind of mean to hummingbirds overall. Siege tank getting wiped out at the three. Bottom left-hand corner. Might out. Now, here's the trick. If Phoebus could somehow sneak this nine o'clock, 
then he would be ahead. I don't see him doing it, though. A bunch of mines, an actually decent sized army for Thebus in the bottom left at 138 supply. White near maxed, but a lot of his army is still grouped up in that upper right hand corner. So this isn't a, a full engagement if he was going to go for it. I do like that he's starting to do more of a containment, keep this army in the middle so those vultures can't sneak out style play now that this is going into a longer macro starvation style match. But as far as split map... Okay, so whites mind up, mind out... If we just go by like pure mental, bottom right, everything was mined by Thebus. Bottom left, everything might be mined by Thebus. Currently, white is holding the three. So if Thebus in theory grabs the nine that on paper puts him ahead in TVP. We are seeing some carriers in the background in the midst of all this. So there is a carrier tech switch. I'm not sure I... So he's going to get away with that carrier switch. I'm not sure I like that play, though. I don't know. We'll see. Phoebus. I mean, it's a good way to break all of this. And it is going to force more Goliaths out rather than Vultures. The Dragoon's pushing out in the meantime. Phoebus isn't really in a position where he can counterattack. So I take it back. Carriers are fine. Down to two bases, potentially the last two bases for Thebus in the midst of this. The Dragoon's cycling around, just making sure that nothing sneaks out, while the carrier count grows. A commsat for Thebus. I think just trying to find that army. A drop, actually, going into the 3 o'clock location. The army's not that far away, but a lot of these probes are going to get taken out, so maybe they, maybe White can save the Nexus. Immediately clearing out a cannon. That was a nice reaction maneuver. Clearing out the cannon so we can go ahead and sneak in. The dropship moving back. So Phoebus again continuing to make plays to try to stay in this. Unfortunately, that was still 4 base Protoss versus 2 base Terran. And this is going to be 4 base Protoss shortly again. So all that getting cleared out. Not a lot of probes taken out. But a nice distraction. It looks like that barracks going to be wiped out of the sky as well. And now Phoebus, yeah, locked to two bases. This is a large carrier count. Six carriers? Yeah, and that is sufficient to break bottom left, particularly because how many Goliaths do we see here? Two? Yeah, I don't think Phoebus is... Uh, let's see if he... Did he scout that? Oops. Looks like he just comps added. Sorry about all that. Looks like he just comps added the natural expansion. Nine o'clock base. Not even bothering to grab it. I love this play from White. He's not even bothering to grab it. He's just going to lock it out. Plant a bunch of cannons. So that the, so recognizing the situation, just going to put a bunch of cannons down there so that it is locked out of Phoebus's hands. Phoebus now walking forward. It's also going to buy some time. How many Goliaths do we have here? Five? I think they have Charon Booster. They have level three weapons, but five Goliaths does not beat seven plus carriers another drop at the three o'clock location still opened up some more cans being dropped right there and again this nexus is not going to get wiped out but this is maybe going to buy some time to sneak into that three i love this play so this is just going to delay things the carriers continuing the carrier fleet continuing to grow honestly i feel like this stage white could field them and that would be game as soon as they show up honestly i almost feel like as soon as they're spotted by Thebus, he'll call GG. Trying to plant a turret right there. The command center now moving out to the 9 o'clock location. White repositioning his army to move to the 9. The carrier fleet now moving. Seven carriers grouped up. The command center taking damage from cannon fire as it tries to land. A movie moment here. The Zealot sneaking down. A nice EMP. A second EMP. On the shuttle, I don't think the... I don't think it... Okay, I would like to know. Does EMP remove all the energy from the contained units in the shuttle? Did that render all those High Templar useless? I don't think so, though. Siege tanks being engaged from the low ground. The Dragoon's now backing off. Phoebus not able to establish this. The command center on fire. And the carrier is now swinging around. Yeah, and this is certainly... Going to be... Yeah, I, I don't think that's the case. Carriers now spotted from Phoebus. He does not... I don't think he has the opportunity to get Goliath fielded. Phoebus with a supply lead, by the way, all of a sudden. In the midst of this. But science vessels getting picked off. The command center getting wiped out. I'm wondering if Phoebus is just going to go for an all-in counterattack. Science facility going to get picked out of the air. 
The troops, yeah, just walking in. I think that was just an A move from Thebus. I think this is the GG moment, finally. The Dragoon's there to engage. He's going to try to walk through the rest of this army. White just needs to make sure he continues to macro the command center on assault at the natural expansion. EMP is being dropped to clear these Dragoons a little bit more rapidly, potentially to try to force these reinforcements back. There is another army fielded from White that he just needs to move up to go ahead and engage what's happening in the upper left-hand corner. So both play so he's Thebus is trying to turn this into a base exchange situation, potentially to force these carriers back. There's a single gateway here, but no troops. Double EMP, and Thebus is actually rolling through this rather rapidly. White needs to respond. He can't just let this Nexus uh, get wiped out. The carrier's now falling back to go ahead and engage this army in the upper left. Finally, the troops moving out across the other corner. Two siege tanks somehow snuck out to go ahead and engage that 3 o'clock location. So Thebus, despite being in a desperate, potentially game-ending situation, still very much making a match of it. Took out a Nexus in a hurry. That was a honestly a clinic on how to rapidly take out bases. With a Protoss being unresponsive. Phoebus' aggression is honestly like his ability to just pull the trigger. It's almost Zerg. Like, that's usually what you see out of high level Zerg players. And I really like it. And I'm saying this from him in a losing position here. White suddenly down to 28 probes. However, Phoebus only mining, having to distance mine to the natural expansion bottom left. White just has to go ahead and rebuild. He can go ahead and re-grab that Nexus if he wants to. He still has those carriers fielding out. And with the architecture on this map, I don't know that... First of all, I don't know that Thebus has enough Goliaths to deal with this. Secondarily... Yeah, I think it's just going to be overwhelming forces. Still doesn't have map control. Three o'clock base, mining back again for White. Upper left-hand corner is mined out. Looks like he was able to potentially transfer. I don't know. White's not doing a good job of uh, remining in the back of this. Perhaps feels he's already won this. I don't think it matters, though. Thetis' supply count dropping. Does manage to... Nope. Misses an EMP on several... Actually, it looks like it hit a good amount of these carriers, but not all of them. And Thebus once again rolling out, trying to get aggressive. Wants to tr stop mining at the 1 o'clock location. These troops still silent in the upper right. And the command center that was attempting to be rebuilt once again picked off White barreling, sorry, in trouble, barreling in with the, the carriers. The carriers being forced back. Thebus trying to engage this one o'clock location, also moving some vultures to go ahead and stop the upper left. And Phoebus really trying to press this match. Wants to win this. A large amount of Goliaths now in the bottom left. Phoebus still down 124 supply to 183. Is going to be able to wipe out this Nexus at the 12 o'clock location and is able to deny the Nexus in the bottom left-hand corner. However, this 3 o'clock base is still up. Potentially the 9 o'clock base will... Is this going to be battle probes or just probes AFK dying? I think White is out of, out of resources. Spending a little bit too much time focused on the carrier. This is the problem with carriers. Sometimes you spend too much time focusing on them. Phoebus moving out wants to go ahead and engage the 3 o'clock location. This is a fight to the death. Like, both players are going to keel over on their keyboards after this one. Looks like the probes were managed to able to sneak out of that corner. Thebus again moving forward. This is not where the carriers want to be, caught in open field. The Dragoons are going to be able to engage with the Goliaths here. And all of a sudden, I'm like, will Thebus win this? Potentially. White needs to... Yeah, there the troops are finally moving back out. A single siege tank sneaking through, potentially to do something at that 3 o'clock. White regrouping this army. Distance mining at the natural expansion for Thebus. White still has... Maybe he can go ahead and re-grab uh, this 9 o'clock or start distance mining there himself. He's low on resources as well. Still has a huge supply count lead. But the way Thebus has been playing this has honestly uh, been pretty brilliant. A siege tank sieging up. Manages to sneak in that back line to disrupt mining there. However, battle probes coming off the line to group up and... Defend their homeland. Electrifying it. I'm going to stick on this feature. I know there's other things happening on the map, but this is the important piece here. Probes having their day in battle and gloriously defending the 3 o'clock location. Siege tank wiped out. Way to go, Probe. Who got the official kill? Can I find him? Probably not. Now we'll move on. Goliath dropping into that 9 o'clock. Carrier's looking. SCV's trying to press in. So it's going to be a battle over a 9. And at this stage, the way things are working out, honestly, I feel like if Phoebus can somehow sneak the 9 o'clock location, he might be able to win this match. 
However, White barreling down 155 supply versus a plummeting, a nice stasis as well. The Goliath, a lot of Goliath stasis, and that might be it. White bearing down with the entirety of his army into what's left here. Still six carriers in the air, Dragoons to deal with everything that's left underneath. And I think this might just be a mop-up operation now for White. There's GG from Phoebus, but wow! Phoebus really made a match of it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. This might be, yeah, the next highlight match. This is a great, great match, and I'm looking forward to the series as it continues. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.